Hello class. So on this video, we'll continue on section 2.6. So in the previous video, basically what we did is give this definition for the multivariable chain rule. It's basically how to take the derivative of a function with respect to t, where f is a function of two variables x and y, given that both x and y are functions of a single variable t. So basically what was important was this formula. The interpretation doesn't really matter for us. We went over an example about how to use this. And now we can actually apply it. So let's solve. And again, remember that solve is the same as find the general solution. So I've mentioned this a lot of times in uh, just verbally. Let me write it. Let me just write it here. Solve is interchangeable to with find the general solution. And of course, we know a general solution is an expression involving all possible solutions for the differential equation. So solve the differential equation, 2x plus 3 plus 2y minus 2 times y prime equals 0. So let's first check um, whether this function is separable. Right? As of now, we only have ways of finding general solutions for separable differential equations. Right? Ones where we can either integrate both sides immediately or we can rewrite in a way that we can integrate both sides. You could check here that there is no way to write to solve for dy dx in a way that you get dy dx equals an expression involving y times an expression involving x. Remember, this is what a separable differential equation meant. Or you can rewrite this as y prime equals an expression only involving y some constants times an expression only involving x and constants. Again, this is important because if you can, just divide both sides by h of y and integrate both sides. And you can try here, you can try to multiply this out, try to rewrite, solve for y prime, and you could try as much as you want to rewrite that thing like this. You won't be able to. What that means is, in terms of how we, could, how we would find a solution or the general solution for this differential equation, we're kind of stuck, right? There's nothing we can do. We only know We've only seen how to find solutions for separable differential equations. Instead, we're going to do this. Now, look at this differential equation here. Now, look, oh, wow, I wrote that function kind of. So it's not straight down, but I guess it's OK. It's not straight horizontal. But look at this function here. And we're going to rewrite the differential equation here. So actually, let me try to just copy it and see if I can do it this time. Yeah, so so there's a tool here, and I'm using OneNote that lets me copy and move things, but for some reason, it's not working. So let me just rewrite it. So we have 2x plus 3 plus, this was 2y minus 2 times dy dx equals 0. So look at this function on the left and look at that differential equation on the right. There's, these two things are related. It's not exactly obvious how, but I'm going to show you how. Let's find what the partial derivative of f with respect to x is. And then again, what do you do? Treat the variable x, uh, take the derivative as you would with respect to x, treating y as a constant. So the derivative of x squared is 2x, derivative of 3x is 3, derivative of y squared minus 2y, for our purposes, all, the, all of those are constants, so that's 0. So notice that the partial derivative of f with respect to x is precisely this term here. Now let's find the partial derivative with respect to y. Okay, again, take the derivative as you would with respect to y, treating x as a constant. So the derivative of x squared plus 3x, for our purposes, all of those are constants, that's, that goes to 0. Derivative of y squared with respect to y is 2y. Derivative of y, 2y with respect to uh, y is 2. And again, notice that this part here, the partial f with respect to y, is precisely this part of the differential equation. Now there's one more relationship that about between these two um, 
this function in this differential equation that I'm going to show you now. For that, I'm going to have to use the chain rule that I showed you in the previous video. So, well, we have a function of, f of x and y. Of course, x is a function of x, right? because x itself is a function of x. Now, we're looking for a, in terms of the differential equation, we're looking for a function y that is a function of x that satisfies this differential equation. So what if we also assume that y is a function of x? And again, this is safe for, to assume because we're trying to look for a y that by definition is a function of x that satisfies the differential equation. So if we think of it this way, as we have a function of x and y, where x is a function of x and y is a function of x, we can apply the chain rule we learned in the previous section, in the previous videos. Why? Because these were the conditions that we needed. Assume we have a function of two variables where both variables x and y are functions of a single variable, in this case, x. Now, the other thing we have to assume, because we're gonna have to take the derivative of y with respect to x, is that y is differentiable. But again, that kind of comes because we're looking for functions that are solutions to a differential equation. So it makes sense for us to assume that y is differential. Oh, not differential, differentiable. So again, it makes sense to assume that y is a function of x and that it is differentiable, because that's exactly the type of function that we're looking to solve this differential equation. So again, given this condition, so given this, given this, and given that f is a function of x, y, well, we can use the chain rule. What was the chain rule? The chain rule told us that, and I'm going to write it here again, and again, this is why I mentioned that the only thing that matters is the formula. The chain rule told us that the derivative of f, with the normal derivative, not the partial, but the regular derivative with respect of f with respect to x, of this function of two variables, where both variables are functions of the single variable x, is given by, well, take partial f with respect to x, multiply by the derivative of, well, here, whatever the first variable is, with respect to x, so our first variable is x. We're taking the variable of x with respect to x. So we can write it as that, dx dx, okay. plus partial f partial y times the derivative of y with respect to x. What is the next thing that we're going to do here? Now, if we further assume that f of x, y equals a constant, so let me write it here. If f of x, y equals some constant, doesn't matter which one it is. If we take the derivative of both sides of this equation with respect to x, so the f dx equals d dx of c. In other words, we know that df dx equals zero. So I'm basically here writing the assumptions that we're going to need to use for, uh, for this to give us a way to solve that differential equation. I believe that's the last one. So again, these first conditions allow us to use the chain rule this condition is, is actually going to allow us to rewrite this in a way that we can actually apply this to the differential equation. So if we assume that, that f of x, y is a constant, then we know that df dx equals zero. Right? That's what I wrote on the right-hand side. We know what partial f partial x is. Right? That's 2x plus 3. The derivative of x with respect to x is 1. Right, so just multiply 2x plus 3 plus 1 uh, times 1. That's just itself. Plus df dy, or the partial of f, sorry, with respect to y. We know that's 2y minus 2. 
and dy dx, we can't solve exactly, right? But we know that it's some differentiable function of x. Let's just leave it as dy dx. What does this mean? What we just did here is show that df dx, the regular derivative of f with respect to x, equals 0, which equals this expression here. And then notice that this expression here is exactly the differential equation that we started with. Right, this part here is exactly the differential equation that we started with. Now, why is this all important? What we conclude, what, what we can conclude from all this is this. What this means is that there exists some function f of x, y, such that our differential equation um, actually let me include the fact that we're making this function equal to a constant. So there exists some function f of x, y equal to c for some constant c. Now, when you study Calc 3, you'll see that an expression like this, f of x, y equals a constant, that's actually called a level surface. And that's not important for us, but if, if you've studied this before, I wanted to point that out. So there exists some function f of x, y equal to c for some constant c, such that, oh, I don't know why I changed colors, such that the derivative of this function, a known function that we have with respect to x, so when we take the derivative on both sides here with respect to x, is our original differential equation. So let me recapulate. And again, I know that this is, in a sense, a little bit theoretical, but it's important. So let me recapulate. We had, we started with differential equation. We noticed that this function, f of x, y, satisfies so here I have it exactly. On the bottom I said that there is some function. Here I have it exactly. But we, what we saw is that this function f of x, y satisfies that this here is partial f with respect to x. So actually let me write it underneath. So this is partial f, partial x. This here is partial f, partial y. And not only that, we saw that if we take the derivative of f with respect to x, which we can do if we consider these assumptions here, which again, they're reasonable to assume given the type of problem we're trying to solve. And if we further assume that our function is equal to some constant, what do we have? In fact, we have that our original differential equation is just the derivative of f of x, y with respect to x or more precisely, it's the derivative of this equation. Okay, why is that useful? Now the conclusion, why is this useful? What does this mean? So what this means is that, okay, so for this particular case, we know what f of x, y is. What this means is that if y is a solution, or actually, let me write it like this. Yeah, if y is a, let's, see, let's write it as, yeah, let's do it like this. If y is a solution to 
f of x, y equals c for some constant c. Then y is also a solution to our differential equation. Why is this true? Well, because of this statement here. Um, let me, I guess, start it. We know this is true because of this statement here. Because we know that our differential equation comes from taking the derivative of both sides of some function of x, y equal to c. So whatever y satisfies this original equation, well, we're taking the derivative of uh, something that equals, you know, of an equation. So we know that the left-hand side equals the right side. Well, whatever y we had there has to also satisfy this equation because all we did was take derivatives of the first equation. We went from here to here, taking derivatives. So whatever y satisfies this first equation should also satisfy the second equation. And that's what's important for us. Okay. What does that mean? We can go from an, a calculus problem, you know, trying to find a solution to this differential equation. So we can go from a cal oh, I keep using the same color. Sorry, I'm trying to use it different. Yeah, so we can go from this differential equation, a calculus problem, to an algebra equation. Can you solve in this expression for y as a function of x? So for our problem specifically, and let me see what the, so x squared plus three x, okay. So if y satisfies x squared plus three x plus y squared minus two y equals c for some constant c, then y is also a solution to our ODE. So from all of this setup, so I did all of this to show you that how this is, or let me say it like this, I did all this, first of all, to show you how this process works, but most importantly to show you that we can always solve or under some conditions, we can solve a differential equation of this form. How? Simply by finding a function such that when we take it, make it equal to a constant and take its derivative with respect to x, we get the original differential equation. So we, again, we can solve this differential equation by finding this function f of x, y. It's crazy, very crazy, right? But really powerful. Now, how do we find that function? Well, in this example, I gave it to you. How do we find it though? That's gonna be something a little bit, just a little bit more complicated, but not that much. So we're gonna do that in the next video. And in fact, a differential equation that is of this form, that is the derivative of some function equal to a constant, that's what we call an exact differential equation.